If you want a clear full vocal sound, then you very likely need to EQ your vocals. So in this video, I wanna walk through everything you need to know to get a way more professional vocal sound using EQ. Welcome back to the band guide where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin. And this video is the second video in a six part series on how to get a pro vocal sound in GarageBand. If you took the time to get a good recording that you're happy with of your vocals, then it's completely possible to get a professional sounding vocal in GarageBand. The key is to knowing what tools to use and how to use them. So in this six part series, we're gonna cover everything, but I wanna give you even more. I've put together a six step pro vocal checklist that walks through the six steps that we're gonna be covering in these series. So you can reference back to it anytime you're working on mixing vocals. That way you don't miss a step and you can be sure that you're getting the best sounding vocal possible. So be sure to download it from link in the description below. Again, it's completely free, but let's go and talk about how to use EQ to shape your vocals to create a more professional vocal sound. Okay, the first thing we need to understand to use EQ to shape our vocal sound is what exactly EQ is and how it works. So EQ is a tool that allows us to boost or reduce the volume, cut the volume at specific frequencies along the frequency spectrum for our source. Now the frequency spectrum sounds complicated, but it just means super low frequencies up to super bright trebly frequencies. And this may seem intimidating. It may seem like you have infinite possibilities across this entire range, but the reality is you don't. You have five distinct areas in a vocal sound that you may need to address on an EQ. And so we'll go over what those five areas are in this vocal. Now, one other thing about EQ is that there's three types of moves. There's a filter that's just going to cut out anything from below or in this case, above the point that you set. So that's just gonna cut all those frequencies out. The second type is a bell. That's gonna boost in a bell shape or cut in a bell shape. This is a very common EQ move. And then there's a shelf and this is gonna boost anything below or in the high shelf case, anything above. And then lastly, you also can set the width of all these shapes. So it can be really wide or really narrow. That's determined by the Q down here in the bottom corner. And on newer versions of GarageBand, you can pull this bar on the side out. So that's our starting point for with this EQ. Let's go and talk about the first EQ range you need to understand in a vocal, and that is the low rumble area. So we're gonna work from the left all the way up to the right, from our low sub frequencies up to our bright airy frequencies. And this low rumble area is the first area we need to focus on. So this rumble area is anything from 80 hertz up to 150, occasionally even 200 hertz if you have a really high pitched singer and below. Anything that's below this point is just gonna be rumble in your source. So if we listen to this vocal in solo here, if I boost this, but I can't forget. there's just nothing really happening down here. Used to have ambition we can see some movement, but that is likely more just kind of air moving around the source than it is something that needs to be in the source itself. And so the first thing we actually wanna do is just cut all of that out. This is gonna help us create space for other sources that actually need those frequencies in the mix, your kick and your other low end sources. So we're just gonna bring this high pass filter up until we notice it's starting to cut into the vocal and then we'll scale it back a little bit. But I can't forget. And you can see it visually. Used to have he doesn't really get below maybe 100 hertz here. I can't forget. Used to have ambition. If I were to go all the way up to 200, but I can't forget. on his vocal, it starts to sound a little bit thin. Now in some mixes, that would be totally fine. But in this mix, we want this vocal to be nice and big and full. So we're just gonna set it at the lowest point we can, which is around 100 Hertz. But I can't forget. I'm not impacting that low frequency at all, but we're still cutting out anything below that that's unnecessary. So this is our first EQ move. This is cutting out any rumble. Now, this is the only EQ move that I literally always do. Every vocal I do a high pass filter on. Every other move after this is determined very much on the vocal itself. So the recording, the microphone, the room, the singer, the range they're singing in, everything about that is gonna determine how I set my EQ moves across these next four areas. In some cases, the high pass filter cutting out rumble is the only thing I do on a vocal. In other cases, I'm gonna have a little bit of moves at each of these next four points. So first, what are your goals? What do you like or not like about your vocal sound? To me, this vocal sound is a little bit thin currently. Used to have ambition and religion, and that gave me a vision. 
And so I wanna see if I can bring a little bit more body into it. And that's our second EQ range that we need to be thinking about is the body range. This is anywhere from 100 hertz up to 400 hertz, depending on the vocalist. So if we boost that up here, this is what it sounds like. Used to have ambition and religion. And that gave me now too much is going to start sounding kind of boomy on this vocal i do think it could use a little bit of a boost if i were to cut it it's going to sound to really thin and religion. but i think a subtle bump that gave me a vision. is making this vocal now feel a little bit fuller right if i take this away used to have ambition and if i add it in used to have ambition and religion subtle but it adds a little bit more body to this vocal so if you want a fuller sounding vocal, pay attention to that area from about 100 hertz up to about 400 hertz, depending on your vocalist. The next area we need to focus on is this muddy range. This is where vocals can start to sound a little bit muddy or boxy. This is gonna be anywhere from about 200 hertz up to about 800 hertz. So check this out on this vocal. Used to have ambition and religion and that gave me a vision. If I do a bit of a cut here. Now I'm just spinning. News to have ambition and religion. And that gave me a vision. That makes that vocal feel a lot now clearer, I'm just right? Spinning. It's a subtle move. We're only doing about five decibels, so it's not a tiny move, but it's a subtle move. We have about a three decibel bump up here. You can see that down here in this range. This is how much volume we're adding at these specific frequencies. So we're cutting about five decibels, boosting about five, three decibels here. And that's giving us a fuller sound while not making it muddy or boxy. Used to have ambition and religion. So that's our third frequency range. We have rumble, we have body, we have mud, and then we have the presence range. And this is where our ears are most sensitive and where things are gonna cut through the most in the context of our mix. Now, this is anywhere from 1K up to about 4K. Check this out on this vocal. Used to have ambition and religion And that gave me a vision Now I'm just spinning so to me, somewhere around this range is starting to sound good, but we want to find this in the context of the mix. Where is it going to cut through in the context of this mix? Used to have ambition and religion. That gave me a vision. Around there feels now pretty I'm good. Just spinning. Used to have ambition and religion. That I feel like that sits just above the guitars, so I like this. But if I were to overdo this, if I were to do a big bump up here. Used to have ambition and It's going to have a really religion. weird, thin sound. So we want to be timid with this. So only do it if you need it and do as much as you need, but don't do too much. Used to have ambition and religion. So that sounded pretty good. And then the last move we want to make is in the air frequency range. This is a really, really bright frequency range. This range is great because we only perceive these frequencies for sources that are super close to us in the real world. We only hear these frequencies if the people are really close to us. So by boosting up here, if necessary, if it's needed in your vocal, can make the vocal feel way up front in the mix, super close to the listener. It also gives it kind of that high fidelity sheen. Check this range out. Used to have it. Ambition and religion, and that gave me a so when we overdo it, it starts to sound kind of papery, kind of harsh. But when we add just a little bit, used to have ambition and religion, and sometimes you want to go way up here in these super bright used frequencies. To have ambition and me, I think around 8k is working on this vocal. Let's try to find this again in the context of the mix. Where does it sound good with everything else? Used to have ambition and Now you'll notice the S's and the T's pop out a little bit more as I bump up in this range. That's okay, we're gonna address that in the next video. But for now, if it's making the rest of the vocal sound really good, then you might wanna keep that bump up there. This is gonna be how you get that super present vocal sound that's clear and upfront in the mix. Used to have ambition and religion That gave me a vision Now I'm just spinning Kind of crazy, right? So we've only done a few subtle moves across these four ranges, but we've really shaped this vocal sound to be a little bit fuller, a little bit more present. I could actually maybe even use a little bit more body and maybe scale these back just a hair, but this is already sounding a lot clearer and more upfront to me. Used to have ambition and religion That gave me a vision Now I'm just spinning So 
So what do you think? Is EQ a big part of creating a more professional vocal sound? I certainly think so. And I would say that all the pros think so too. It's definitely a tool that all professionals are using on their vocals to make them sound fuller, clearer, more present in the mix. So don't skip this step. This is hugely important. And to make sure you don't skip this step, be sure to download my pro vocal checklist. It's gonna walk through everything we're covering in the series so you can easily refer back to it anytime you're mixing vocals. It's free from the link in the description below, so be sure to pick it up. Before we go, I wanna hear from you. How have you approached vocal EQ in the past? Have you been doing it? Have you been confused by it? Have you just left it off completely? Was this helpful? Are you gonna try to follow this approach in the future? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video.